Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jairo, and today we're going to be talking about the mathematics behind polyrhythms. So I'm going to be going over how to play certain polyrhythms I've posted recently, like a 21 against 37 or a 17 against 38, by using mathematical methods in order to simplify the process. So before we learn how to play these rhythms, we have to first understand the math behind them. Polyrhythms are ratios which represent the number of beats played by two or more rhythms during the same amount of time. For example, if we had a 3 against 5 polyrhythm, then we can see that we have 3 notes on one rhythm played in the same amount of time as 5 notes on the other rhythm. Since the 5 side has more notes in the same amount of space as the 3 side, it's going to sound faster than the 3 side. Now, how can we quantify the difference in these speeds? First, we have to set a bass tempo or control speed. Since we're using a metronome, as every musician should, we're going to use this tempo as our bass tempo, and we're also going to play one side of our polyrhythm along with the metronome. So let's say we play the five side along with the met at 90 beats per minute. This means that the three side would sound slower in relation to the five side. Now let's quantify in beats per minute just how much slower the three side would be. If the three side is playing three beats in the same amount of time as the five side is playing five beats, then the three side is three fifths the tempo of the five side. We can also write three fifths as a decimal, which is 0.60. Now if the five side has a tempo of 90 beats per minute, then the tempo of the three side would be three fifths of 90 beats per minute which is 54 beats per minute. Now let's say we played the three side along with the mat. This means that the tempo of the five side would be five thirds the tempo of the three side, thus having a tempo of 150 beats per minute. We can also write five thirds as a decimal, which is about 1.67. Thinking of ratios can help us play polyrhythms since we can translate five over three as a five against three polyrhythm. However, thinking of the value of 5 over 3, which is 1.67, allows us to see the speed of the polyrhythm. In another recent video I posted, I played a series of polyrhythms that sounded like they got progressively slower, even though the right hand was always playing with the metronome. If we suppose that the tempo of the metronome, whatever it may be, has a speed of 1, then we can use the ratio of any polyrhythm to figure out the speed of the polyrhythm. Here's the list of the polyrhythms played in that video. We can think of these ratios as fractions and then find their value, which tells us their speed relative to one another. Since the right hand is playing with the metronome, we'll say it has a speed of one, which means that the left hand speed is determined by the polyrhythm. For an eight against nine polyrhythm, the left hand will have a speed of eight over nine, which is about 0.89. For a three against five polyrhythm, the left hand will have a speed of three over five, which is about 0.60, and so forth. We can now see how the speed of the polyrhythms changed when played back to back. Seeing these polyrhythms as ratios of speeds is going to give us an insight as to how to tackle bigger polyrhythms like a 21 against 37. Let's look at that polyrhythm real quick. I know it sounds a bit tough and unapproachable, but let's see if the math behind it gives us any clue as to how to play it. If we set the 21 side with the metronome, then the 37 side will have 37 21 the tempo of the 21 side. If we look at 37 over 21 as a value, we get about 1.762, which tells us the speed of the polyrhythm. This value itself doesn't simplify the process of playing the polyrhythm, but it can give us some insight. Earlier, we started with a given polyrhythm, then we found the value of its ratio. Now we're going to start with the value and find the simplest ratio that best approximates it. In other words, we're going to take this 1.762 and round it to the nearest third, fourth, fifth, or whichever denomination you feel is best. In this case, 1.762 is close to 1.75, so if we find the ratio whose value is 1.75, we'll have a polyrhythm that sounds very similar to a 21 against 37. 1.75 as a fraction is 7 over 4, so this means that a 7 against 4 and 37 against 21 sound similar. Here the 7 side is 1.7 times faster than the 4 side, 
So since 37 over 21 is 1.762, a 37 against 21 sounds like a 7 against 4, with the 7 side just being a tiny bit faster. Let's first listen to a 7 against 4. Now let's listen to a 37 against 21. Both rhythms sound similar, but the 37 against 21 sounds a little wonky. Even though they're not exactly the same, if we start with this 7 against 4 frame of mind, we can have a better chance of playing this 37 against 21. Let's see just how subtle the difference between these two polyrhythms is. For a 37 against 21, we must have the 38th note of the 37 side and the 22nd note of the 21 side play at the same time. Now let's look at a series of 7 against 4 polyrhythms. If we look at the 38th note of the 7 side and the 22nd note of the 4 side, we can see that they do not line up, but let's see if we can speed up or slow down one of these rhythms so these notes line up with each other. Let's say the 37th side is playing with metronome. Then we'll fix that side and either speed up or slow down the 21 side. For a 7 against 4, the 22nd note of the 4 side is shown here. And so we need to stretch the 4 side until the 22nd note is here, where this 38th note of the 37th side is at. Now the question is, how much do we stretch it? We're going to quantify the position of the 22nd note for both polyrhythms in terms of how many beats of the original tempo have passed. We already know that if we have a 37 against 21, then after the 21 side has played 21 notes, the 37 side has played 37 notes, right? But now, if we have a 7 against 4, we want to know, after the 4 side has played 21 notes, how many notes has the 7 side played? To find this, we can use some math. We want to start with the 7 over 4 and rewrite this fraction so that there's a 21 in the denominator. To do this, we want to multiply 7 over 4 by 21 over 21. This is equal to 1, so we won't change the value of the ratio. We'll only rename it. Since we want a 21 in the denominator, we're going to forget about this number, and we're going to manipulate the rest of the numbers to find the numerator. We get 7 times 21 divided by 4, which gives us 36.75. This means that for a 7 against 4, after the 4 side has played 21 notes, the 7 side has played 36.75 notes as opposed to 37 against 21, where the 37 side has played all 37 notes. This difference in timing is only one fourth of a beat, which means that to play a 37 against 21, we can think about playing a series of seven against four polyrhythms where the four side plays a hair slower so that it can fit the same amount of 21 notes in a space that's bigger by one 16th note. Now let's translate this over to playing. If we're going to think about playing a 37 against 21 using 7 against 4 polyrhythms, then we want to think, how many groups of 7 can we fit inside 37? In other words, what's 37 divided by 7? We get 5 and 2 sevenths, which means that we'll play 5 7 against 4 polyrhythms with an extra 2 beats on the 7 side. Now we're going to slow down the 4 side so that over the span of the 37 notes, we play 21 notes. This means that every time you play the first partials of the 7 against 4 polyrhythms, the stretch 4 side will be played slightly later than the 7 side, making the beginning of the 7 against 4s sound like a flam that's getting more open. By the time we get to our last 7 against 4, the flam between the rhythms sounds like two 16th notes. This is because we stretch the four side to fit inside the space of an extra one fourth of a beat or an extra 16th note. Okay, now let's put this together. We're gonna play five seven against fours and two extra notes on the seventh side. The focus is to displace the four side very slowly and listen to the tightness of the flams created. Put it all together and we get a 37 against 21. Now we're going to go over how to play another complex polyrhythm using the same approximation method. Let's take a 38 against 17 polyrhythm. 
Our first task is to find the speed of the polyrhythm. So we'll set the 17th side to be with the metronome. Therefore, the 38th side is 38 seventeenths the speed of the 17th side. 38 over 17 is about 2.235. This is approximately 2.25, which as a fraction is 9 over 4. Now we're going to find the position of the 39th note of the 9th side and the 18th note of the 4th side. These are the notes that we want to have line up to create the 38 against 17. We first have to ask, how many notes has the 9th side played after the 4th side has played 17 notes? To find this, we'll start with the 9 over 4 and rewrite it with the 17 on the 4th side by multiplying 9 over 4 by 17 over 17. Since we want the 17 to stay in the denominator, we'll manipulate the remaining numbers, 9 times 17 divided by 4, which gives us 38.25. This means that after the 4th side has played 17 notes, the 9th side has played 38.25 notes. In order to play 38 notes in that space, we'll either compress or speed up the 4th side so it plays all 38 notes in the space of 1 16th note less. This means that as we play the 9 against 4 polyrhythms, the 4th side will be early since it's being sped up. Now how many 9 against 4 polyrhythms can we fit inside of 38 against 17? 38 divided by 9 gives us 4 and 2 ninths, which means that we will play 4 9 against 4 polyrhythms with an extra 2 beats on the 9 side. In that space, we will very slowly displace the 4 side 1 16th note earlier, so that by the time we play the last 9 against 4, the 4 side will sound like it's 1 16th note ahead. Put it all together, and we get a 38 against 17. Alright guys, now that'll be all for this video. Hope you learned something new. If you found it interesting or useful at all, drop a like, share with a friend, and if you have any questions about it, drop them in the comments and I'll address any concerns you guys have. Alright? See you on the next one.